We're going to start up here in the front. It is a 28 dB. We're going to start in the front compartment. It has a bin on the left hand side for the battery. It has magnets on the lid to hold it up out of the plug way. Once we're down in here, we have two battery disconnects on the inside. The one on the left hand side is for the battery. The one on the right hand side is in case you decide to put an inverter in. It's already pre-wired for the inverter and it does have a disconnect at the top. It does have a metal bottom for putting heavy things in it. We're gonna slide over to this side here. It has a extend and retract switch for the front jacks. There is a manual way that you can crank them jacks up or down if for any reason it won't work off the switch. I'll show you that when we get to the other side of the trailer. We're gonna come into the propane compartment. It has two 30 pound propane cylinders that are full except for what we use to service the trailer. The auto regulator is up here at the top. The arrow is pointed to this tank here. It shows you green inside the eye. As soon as this tank would happen to come up empty, it's gonna turn red inside the eye, indicating that the bottle it's pointed to is empty. If you have the cylinder on the opposite side already open, it'll automatically pick up from that side over there so you don't lose your gas service in the middle of the night. It's still gonna show you red inside the eye that the bottle it's pointed to is empty. Then all you have to do is flip the lever over to the other side, take this bottle off, take it down, and have it refilled. We're gonna come into the water compartment next, and it does have a magnet on it to hold it up out of the way. On your water fill compartment, the top black connection is your black tank flush. To the left of it is a pump switch that turns the water pump on between your fresh water tank in the faucets are between your winterized hose and the faucets. It all depends on how you turn your two valves. There's five different settings for your valves. You have a powerful tank fill, a dry camp pumping from the freshwater tank to the faucets. Then you have a city water connect and a sanitation, which is also your winterization. It all depends on how you turn the two valves. There's five different ways that you can use those. You do have a city water connect on the right hand side. The one on the left hand side is for sanitizing the tanks and winterizing. There's also a hole in the bottom of the compartment that you can bring your water hose up or your cable connections so that you don't have to leave the big door open all the time. And then that little round lid just screws right back down in place when you're in travel. Right back beside of that, you do have a port spray that gives you cold water on this side of the unit only. We're going to come into the hot water heater. It has an on and off button, which it is in the on position now. The zero is the off, the I is the on. We have to show you the rest of the suburban on demand water heater when we get to the inside. On our dump station here in the front. The two inch gray valve in the front is your bathroom shower and sink water. The three inch valve in the back is your toilet water only. It does have a second three inch valve in behind that that is in the open position. It's also used for winterizing of the unit so it doesn't have water out of the end of the termination valve for when you have it winterized. Right in behind that, is the two low water drain points. The red side is the hot side of the water system. The blue is the cold side of the water system. Right behind the termination valve. The lug nuts on the trailer have been torqued at 100 foot pounds. It's what's recommended on the side of the unit. The tires are aired up to pressure, which is 80 PSI on the side of the tire code cold means the tire's not been spinning. Right in behind the back axle, there is a two inch white valve that is the drain for the fresh water tank. For draining the fresh water tank. The two blue lines hanging down beside of it is to let air out of the fresh water tank while it is filling. And if you would happen to overfill the tank, water will pour out them two blue lines too. We have another termination valve here in the back that is for your kitchen sink water only. 
It is a 50 amp service. Goes on, makes a quarter of a turn, tighten up the black knob. The cord's 30 foot long. It does have two blue lights on the end that plugs into your outlet to indicate that it has 110 power coming through both sides. In the very back of the unit, it is prepped for a Lippert extendable ladder for going up and checking the roof. It's also prepped for a backup camera just below the center running light. One more big compartment here in the back. It does have magnets on it to hold it up. It is a pretty good sized compartment. You can add a lot of stuff back in there. As we come around this side over here, it has a dog holder on the back corner of the unit. We have our stabilizer jacks, pretty simple. Push the extend, they're going to come down until they hit the ground. Once they hit the ground, you're going to put a little pressure on them. They won't lift the trailer for leveling from side to side. They just stabilize the trailer while you're walking through the center of it. We're going to let them come out until they hit the ground. Then we're going to push the button again. Just put a little bit of pressure on them. If we come back to the off-door side, for any reason, they will not work off the switch. There is a manual way that we can crank the jacks up or down. It's on the off-door side. It is the split tube right there. There is a splitted handle in the front compartment on the door side that will manually crank those jacks up or down either way you need to go. It will not work off the switch. We're gonna come right in front of that. Outside kitchenette. It does have a magnet that holds it up out of the way. The only thing in the kitchenette on this one is an outside refrigerator. The outside refrigerator is 110 only. Has to be plugged into 110 for that to cool. So we're gonna shut that back down. The reason the trailer's dripping, it just got worst. The outside of the furnace is next. It's gonna suck cold air in the top, hot air out the bottom. I always suggest putting the mud dauber screen over the outside of the furnace for the simple fact the mud dauber screen is less than 20 bucks. It's $145 an hour for every hour that we have to take the furnace out to clean the mud daubers out of it. Once it's been lit on propane, for some reason, they little critters love that smell and they go right there, they build their little dirt nest on the inside and it cuts your airflow down. Right above that is the hood range outside connection. For it to work properly, the two tabs have to be lifted out. It allows the flapper to flap back and forth. But when you're traveling down the road, you'll want to push those back in, keep it secured. That way it don't sit there and flap till it breaks itself out. There is a place for a TV on the outside that works off the antenna and the booster in the master bedroom and a 110 outlet to plug it into in case you wanted to watch the ball game underneath the canopy. We're gonna skip right past the door for a minute. There is a hole in the side here Three quarter inch nut goes inside there and will manually crank your spare tire back down to the ground. If for any reason you have a flat and have to use the spare tire, there is a handle that cranks it down. We're gonna come into the front compartment on this side over here. This one does not have a magnet, it has two struts to hold it up into place. On the left hand side at the very top is an awning switch that operates the awning in and out. The light switch right down below it Turns your LED lights underneath the awning on. We'll kick that on and we'll go ahead and we'll run that awning out. We're gonna stop it right there before we hit the trailer in front of us. There is a pinch point <coughs> on both running arms at the very bottom that you can pull down against that would put the pitch of the rain coming off this corner here. If you do it on the back arm, it puts the pitch of the rain going off the back corner of the unit. We're gonna go back in here one more time. There is the two handles, the three quarter inch one for cranking the spare tire down we have this one here for doing your two stabilizer jacks in the back. And this one will also 
manually crank the two front jacks up or down. We have a compartment light that works two ways. It's motion sensored or on 24 seven, either way. The little red connection right down below that is for the solar panels that's up on top. That is the solar panel disconnect for it. Right below that is the solar panel digital readout that tells you what your solar panels are putting out to your battery. It'll also show you when the battery is fully charged. Right down below that is prepped for a tire monitoring system. If you wanted to buy the tire monitoring system that goes with the unit that plugs into that connection right there. We're gonna come right past that, come up to the front propane bottle on the door side. It still gets switched from the auto regulator on the off door side, but it has its own little red regulator over here for the pressure. If you have both bottles open, even though the one over there is the one you got it turned to and it would happen to run out of propane, it'll automatically pick up from this one here. So you don't lose your gas service in the middle of the night. Right in behind that hose is the splitted handle here that will manually crank them front landing jacks up or down. Any reason they won't work on their own, there is a manual way to crank those jacks up or down. Close that back up. We're gonna close this back up. We're gonna go back to the front door. We're gonna open up the door. Open it up all the way. The blue handle on the steps controls the steps in the door frame, loosens it from the door frame, allows it to come out. A little push button on each one of the legs for adjustment. There's 15 to 18 slots in the legs for adjustment. We're gonna bring it out, we're gonna set it down, adjust it to fit. The main thing is it has to lay flat in the threshold of the door so that the front door closes over the top of it properly. To achieve that, you push the buttons underneath each one of the legs and adjust accordingly. We're gonna go up into the inside of the unit it does have a working fire extinguisher on the left hand side. We're gonna come up to the monitor panel. The first red button on the left hand side is the water pump switch. It turns the water pump on between the fresh water tank and the faucets. It illuminates red when it's in the on position. Fresh water tank is showing that it is empty. As it fills up, it'll show one third, two thirds full. Once it hits full, I go out and I turn my water pressure off go into the water fill compartment. The battery is your next one. You push it, shows you that it's fully charged. To get an accurate reading of the battery, you need to have the 110 line unplugged. Anytime it's plugged into 110, it's gonna show you that it's fully charged. But to get an accurate reading, unplug the 110 line and then push your battery button. Black tank one, which is your toilet water, shows you that it's empty. Black tank two is not used in this unit. It's gonna show you empty. Gray tank one, which will be your bathroom shower and sink water, is empty. And then you got gray tank two, which is your kitchen sink water only. And it shows you that it's empty. Here again, we have an awning light switch on the inside and an extend and retract button over here on the right hand side. On the left hand side, we have the button for the slide room to run it out. It's always good to make sure before you run the slide room out that there's not a tree or a vehicle parked up along that side. The good thing about this slide room is there's nothing that it can catch on when it goes in and out. <coughs> the switch in the middle is your ceiling lights to turn your ceiling lights on. And it also has a slider to the right hand side of it for dimming those lights out. Turning them back on bright. Right down below that is the switch thermostat. We're gonna go ahead and turn it off. When you turn it on, it's gonna give you your fan speed, auto, high, and low. You always run, run it in the auto position. You hit your mode button one more time till you get the little snowflake down in the lower right hand corner. You can dial your temperature down for the temperature you want it set at. If you hit that mode button one more time, it says heat in the lower left-hand corner and you'll dial your temperature up for it. Hit it one more time and it says off in the lower right-hand corner. 
So we're gonna go right back through that and turn that back on AC. Right down below it is the Suburban on-demand hot water heater controls. So we're gonna go ahead and flip it back on. It tells you the temperature of the water coming through. Anytime you call for demand on water on the faucets, it's gonna show you a little sprinkler on the left-hand side. It's gonna show you a little fan in the center. And on the right-hand side, it's gonna show you a little flame when the hot water heater is lit on gas. And then you have your up and down button so you can adjust your temperature to what you want the hot water coming out for. We also have a Fahrenheit and Celsius. You always run it on Fahrenheit. But it'll also tell you the amount, the temperature of the water coming out of it when the faucets are calling for demand for water to come out of it. It does have a 110 outlet on the left hand side as we come into the unit. The top drawer here has all your little goodies. We got the little <coughs> remote for the TV, which I'll go ahead and turn it on. <coughs> Excuse me. We have two sets of keys for the unit. The purple key does the lock and deadbolt on the front door, and it does all your outside compartments. All the rest of the paperwork that's in the unit is in this little red bag here in the bottom of the kitchen or the kitchen drawer. And as you see, the TV come on, it got 42 channels working off the booster and the antenna on top of the unit inside the building here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that right back off so I don't have to talk over it. I'm going to put the two keys there by the front door. Pretty good size drawers. Both sides as we come down. We do have a 110 outlet to the left side of the kitchen stove. We have a Greystone microwave convection oven. Has all your little goodies on the inside of it. We're going to come right down to the glass stove top. On the glass stove top, you're going to fold it up two times up out of your way. It'll also kind of make you a backsplash for the back. We're going to turn the handle to where it says light position using the striker on the left hand side for lighting the stove. All three burners up on top. We're going to turn them right back off. We're going to come down to the oven. On the oven button you have to push it in, turn it to where it says pilot using the same striker on the left hand side. You're going to light the pilot, let it run for about a minute, which heats the thermal coupler up right above it. Once the thermal coupler comes up to temperature, you can crank it up, automatically the oven lights. Then you can adjust it to the temperature you want for your baked goods. No dragging out the long lighter or match anymore. The striker on the left hand side does it all for you. Before you lay the glass stove top back down to the griddle, you want to make sure it's cold to the touch of the hand before you put it back down. Once the glass stove top's down, it gives you more counter space. There's pretty good sized cabinets. One for the tall people up there at the top. And then three here off to the side. You can add a lot of goodies in it. The light above the sink has to be turned on by hand. It has a little push button on the left hand side of it that turns it on. We have another 110 outlet to the left side of the kitchen sink. On your washer faucet, to the left is the water side of it. To the right comes to the sprinkler down for the vegetable washer. It also has a container underneath for soap. And it has a bottle washer on the right hand side that you just push down. It squirts water up and cleans the inside of your glasses out. Water comes out and goes down through the tray. It also has a strainer in the bottom. If you wanted to put water into the sink. We got pretty good sized cabinets down below. The one to the left hand side has your trash can. As we walk around the corner, it has a carbon monoxide LP detector. It'll drive you crazy.
that is the carbon monoxide side of it. If it smells, it does LP and carbon monoxide, and it will drive you crazy if it goes off. In your breaker box, from the breakers from the left to the right, your first one is your GFCI outlet. The rest of them are marked down here at the bottom. Your 12 volt car fuses are from the top down. Anytime one of the 12 volt fuses blows, it'll have a red light off to the right hand side of it, indicating that the fuse that is beside blows. And you can also see that red light through the tinted glass on the front of the converter. Up into the bedroom area, the bunk area, there is a light for each one of the bunks and a 110 outlet. We also have the two round vents in the ceiling that brings AC into the bunk area. Same way on the bottom. But we also have a light switch on the bottom that turns the light right above us on. It doesn't have the fancy little dimmer for dimming it in there. We have a pretty good sized cabinet space on the right hand side for clothes and two drawers down below it. We also have a fire escape window on the bottom bunk. <coughs> in case any reason there would be an accident and you would have to escape out the window, it's pretty simple. You grab a hold of the red handle on the screen, pull the screen loose. The red handle right down below it comes out and goes through the bottom of the window, allowing you access to the outside of the unit. It does have a sliding door for privacy between the kitchen and bunk area. Here again, you got the travel locks up on top. When you open the door, it tells you the temperature of the refrigerator. Here in a minute, it's gonna tell you the temperature of the freezer. It has a lock button down here at the bottom. It has a mode button at the top, and you can change the settings on the refrigerator and freezer between one and six different settings. Anytime it's locked, it'll show you locked at the top. Pretty good size refrigerator. It is a 12 volt refrigerator only. Freezer. Lower freezer section. And remember, anytime you wanna see what the temperature is, if you open the door and shut it, it'll automatically tell you it's 40 degrees in the top, it's one degrees in the bottom. It does have the travel lock at the top that has to be locked back down in place, a little rubber connection there to keep it secured while you're traveling down the road. We're gonna to come to the kitchen area. We have USB ports on the left-hand side. We have a light above the table that has to be turned on by hand. Table goes down into the bedded area. The bigger cushion on this side comes on one side of the table. The little black or brown cushion on the right-hand side comes over to make a smaller bed there. There is two pedestal legs on the floor that go down in the pedestals at the bottom and to the pedestals of the table for when you're going to use it for eating. Comes to us in the travel position as it being down. Since that is a bedded area, the window right behind it, it's not marked as a fire escape window, but can be used for one. Flip the lever down, slide the screen and window to the right hand side, and it gives you that big an opening to get out right there too. Here again, we're gonna come over to the bed area for the couch. Light on the wall has to be turned off by hand. The two back cushions come off the back of the couch. Lay off into the side area. We're gonna lift it up. Two legs underneath the seat of the couch. Comes up, folds out, down into a bed. And then we're going to come around to the back and we're going to lower the top back down to make a uh, bigger than a twin size bed. Nice Here. size for a couch. And it is the memory foam, so it is pretty comfortable. So we're going to lift the back of it back up out of the way. We're going to come back down to the end of the couch. We're going to lift up on it. We're going to fold the legs in. Try to fold it back down in place. Two back cushions are going to come up. Velcro back to the wall. Magically, it's a couch again. Uh-huh. Now you can sit back down. As we're going to come from the living room area, 
up into the bathroom area. I'm going to show you it does have round vents in the ceiling for the AC. We have the quick cool down on the main AC here in the living room area. But the brown circles on the cabinets are for the furnace that bring heat into the living and kitchen area. We're going to come up into the bathroom. Light switch on the right hand side of the wall as we step in. We have another 110 outlet that is GFCI protected by the breaker in the breaker box. We have the two lights in the ceiling. Narrow knob cranks up the vent. Little black button turns the fan on for pulling moisture out of the bathroom area. We're going to lift the lid up. Lid has the explanation on how to use it. You push it halfway down, fill it with water, push it all the way down, fills and dumps. It also has a brown vent in behind the toilet that brings heat up into the bathroom area. Showers, just like what you have at home. Your left hand side is the hot side of the water system, the right hand side is the cold side of the water system, and you do have to pull out on the handle for water to come out of it. It does have the dome up in the shower for you taller guys and a round white vent in the ceiling to bring AC into the master bathroom. We do have a medicine cabinet. Three shelf medicine cabinet on top there. We do have a cabinet space down below. And we do have a sliding door that slides the front of the bathroom for privacy in there. We're going to come back over to the master bedroom. We're going to slide in here. We do have a light switch. On the left hand side of the doors we come in. We have a place mounted for another TV in the master bedroom. A 110 outlet is GFI protected. We also have the TV coax cable and a satellite hookup in here. The little red light indicates that the TV booster is working. We're going to come down to the Dometic thermostat again. We're going to hit the on button. Right off the bat, it tells you your fan speed. You got high, low, and auto. You want to run it in the auto position. You're going to hit the mode button one more time until you see the little snowflake in the lower right hand corner. You'll dial your temperature down for it. Hit the mode button one more time. It shows your furnace in the lower left hand corner. Hit that mode button one more time and it shows you off in the lower right hand corner. Here again we got a brown vent on the wall that brings heat into the master bedroom. We're also prepped for a washer and dryer. And this washer and dryer area does have to be winterized in the winter time. It does have a mark on the exterior wall for the dryer vent to go out of. So we're going to close that back up. And I'll forewarn you, that is a finger pincher. If you get your finger down in it, it really hurts. I was thinking the same thing. I got the blood blister to show it. You have a light switch on the wall that you tap the first time, turns a little night light on, hit it the second time, gives you a light for reading, adjustable. You have a 110 outlet on either side of the headboard on the master bed. Have a pretty good sized closet and shelf on each side of the master bed. The AC in the master bedroom has a quick cool down already open on it. Let's all the cold air come down into here. But it also brings air conditioning in from the living room air conditioner through the round vents in the ceiling. And we have another fire escape window on the off door side. Pretty explanatory. Pull the red handle here to pull the screen loose from the window. Red handle here comes up, goes through the hole in the bottom of the window for access to get out. And we do have quite a bit of storage space up underneath the bed. It does have a light that is a motion sensor light. You can turn it one way or turn it on 24 seven, but it actually lights up when you lift up on the bed. It does have storage up at the top and on both sides. Quite a bit of storage in the master bedroom. It does have a handle at the end of the bed for Lifting it up and closing it down. You don't have to let it just slam down. You can actually bring it down slowly. It does have the blacked out shades in the master bedroom. Both sides. It's it pretty dark inside there.
That is basically everything on your unit. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them the best that I can. And thank you for your time.